Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Inspire seminar series. Um, I would like to start by saying that as we gather here today, we acknowledge we are on Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. So just some quick housekeeping stuff before we start. Um, for everyone who's just joining, if you could turn off your videos and mics, this is to help reduce bandwidth and distractions while our speaker is presenting. If you have any tech issues, please message Ardalyn or Lenore. They're both uh, in the Zoom call with us. And if you have any questions for the speaker, you're welcome to drop them into the chat while she's presenting or hold them until the Q&A session at the end. So we'll have about 10 minutes for that. At this point, I would now like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Ildiko Badea. She completed a bachelor's degree in, in pharmacy from the University of Medicine Pharmacy of Turgo Maresh in Romania in 1987 and a doctorate in pharmaceutical sciences from the University of Saskatchewan in 2006. Uh, she started her career as a pharmacist and, and postdoc at Vito and joined the College of Pharmacy at USASC in 2007 as an assistant professor and then was promoted to full professor in, in 2018. Her research focuses on engineering functionalized diamond nanoparticles for intracellular de delivery of nucleic acids. And she's also mentored numerous undergraduate and graduate students, and some of them are part of Inspire. So at this point, Ildiko, the floor is yours. Thank you, Linda. And thanks for uh, joining me in this uh, seminar. And thank you for the invitation to present my uh, work uh, in this seminar. So I uh, wanted to start with the uh, fact that I am uh, working in pharmaceutical sciences. So my knowledge about uh, uh, synchrotron sciences are limit uh, is quite limited, but I am going to talk a little bit about how we uh, use uh, synchrotron sciences to answer some of the questions in uh, pharmaceutical sciences. The pharmaceutical sciences is a, a very old uh, science. The Ebers papyrus contained already about 700 remedies that uh, were already identified as uh, medicines. And the father of the pharmaceutical sciences is uh, Claudius Galenus, actually, uh, from the second century already developed uh, pharmaceutical formulations. And the cold cream that we still use uh, today uh, is uh, based on his um, work. Uh, in the uh, 21st century, cell and gene therapy was uh, at, at forefront of the pharmaceutical sciences. And uh, the future is uh, nanomedicine uh, for developing uh, new diagnostic technologies and uh, uh, treatment uh, strategies. So as I mentioned, pharmaceutical sciences is um, evolving uh, continuously. I would like to start with uh, acknowledging people who um, worked uh, on these projects and collaborated with uh, me on these projects, and uh, especially for uh, uh, graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, uh, summer students, and technicians who actually did, uh, did the work. And also, this work couldn't be done with uh, funding from um, uh, funding agencies. So why do we need drug delivery, uh, especially for biomolecules is very important because uh, the, all the new treatment options and the more advanced treatment options are relying on biomolecules. Um, so uh, we can develop uh, targeted uh, therapies, but unfortunately, um, these targeted therapies might not uh, achieve an adequate levels of drugs at the target site. So we need to develop drug delivery systems to really um, capitalize on the uh, capabilities of the biomolecules. And uh, because of the biomolecules, uh, some of the diseases that had no uh, treatment uh, up to the recent uh, um, days, uh, we can develop these new uh, treatments with uh, delivery systems uh, developed for the biomolecules. And I give here an example of scleroderma uh, later also in my uh, work and also uh, for cancer. Uh, for delivery of biomolecules, we have to de uh, develop safe and efficient delivery systems. Uh, you probably all know from the uh, COVID vaccines that we have viral uh, systems for um, nucleic acids, for example, and non-viral systems. Uh, most uh, uh, 
uh, commonly known uh, is the non-viral delivery, uh, delivery system for uh, the COVID vaccine, the lipid-based uh, delivery system. And uh, we uh, work on uh, cationic Gemini surfactants, and this is what uh, part of my talk is going to be a little bit later on. Uh, we need uh, drug delivery systems for uh, small molecules as well, because uh, some of these small molecules have a quite poor pharmacokinetic profile, and uh, that is because of their low uh, aqueous solubility. So by developing a delivery system for these uh, molecules, we can improve their uh, safety and um, effic efficiency. Now, this, this was the slide that actually was uh, shared on the uh, cover uh, page. And uh, it shows what, are, what the requirements are for uh, the non-viral nucleic acid delivery systems. There are quite a number of roadblocks in uh, the non-viral um, uh, delivery of the nucleic acids because uh, these uh, nucleic acids are uh, highly hydrophilic molecules. They are um, large molecular weight, uh, so they don't penetrate uh, biological membranes um, without a delivery system. And uh, so for that reason, we have to uh, de uh, develop efficient and safe uh, delivery systems. When we uh, uh, couple the nucleic acids, and here I have the example of uh, DNA with the carrier, we form a, a complex that uh, ne neutralizes this highly negatively charged uh, surface on the DNA and also compacts the uh, DNA or the uh, RNA into um, a nano uh, size um, unit. And also this unit can penetrate then different uh, uh, tissues with uh, uh, much, uh, much more efficiently than the DNA would do um, on its own. However, penetrating uh, uh, into the tissue is not um, the uh, end of the uh, this uh, journey because the this complex have to get inside the cells uh, in order to uh, be um, uh, trans uh, transcribed and translated. So for that uh, process, this um, uh, complex has to be uh, internalized by cells and has to escape that uh, uh, the machinery of the cells for destroying. Uh, foreign materials in order to get into the, uh, the nucleus and uh, express a protein down the road. Even before getting intracellularly, uh, these nano-sized uh, uh, particles can be phagocytosed and destroyed um, uh, that way as well. So uh, this illustrates that we really need to develop good delivery systems to uh, capitalize on the capabilities of uh, nucleic acids. I mentioned earlier that we uh, developed uh, Gemini surfactants as nucleic acid delivery systems, and this is uh, quite a long story. Um, we started with uh, these um, Gemini surfactants that uh, have uh, two hydroph uh, hydrophilic head groups attached to their hydrophobic tails, and they are uh, connected with the spacer. By this um, design, we have a, a, quite a structural versatility compared to the monocationic uh, head uh, uh, surfactants that have only one ionic head group and one hydrophobic uh, uh, tail because uh, this uh, combination that we can achieve by uh, having the spacer and connecting these, uh, these two uh, monovalent um, uh, surfactants. We can have uh, identical head groups with identical tails, or we can have a variety of head groups and a variety of tails uh, attached to these um, uh, uh, attached together. And uh, this uh, scheme on the bottom shows uh, really the structural versatility, uh, because if we have uh, short space here, the uh, molecules will take up a totally different sh uh, shape uh, compared to when we have a long uh, space here, or the tail could be um, a saturated or unsaturated uh, hydrocarbon tail. By comparison, I have here a um, helper lipid molecule also that we use uh, when we make uh, lipid-based nanoparticles uh, for a nucleic acid delivery. 
So this third generation Gemini uh, surfactant we uh, used to uh, deliver um, a, a plasmid DNA into uh, cells that um, uh, were um, designed in order to uh, develop a delivery system for uh, uh, treating scleroderma. So we wanted to deliver uh, these uh, nucleic acids into skin cells. Uh, we realized that the transfection efficiency was highly dependent on the structure of these uh, uh, molecules and the uh, transmission efficiency, here I uh, noted uh, TE, uh, correlated with the surface area occupied by uh, the molecules. We look at, uh, looked at different uh, uh, charge ratios between the cationic uh, lipids and uh, the uh, negatively charged uh, DNA. And we found that at 1 to 10, um, negative to positive charge ratio was ideal because this uh, yielded the highest transfection efficiency with the lowest uh, uh, potential toxicity. So we wanted to explain why these uh, uh, Gemini, uh, some of these Gemini surfactants work better than uh, than others. And we wanted to uh, look at how these uh, Gemini surfactants arrange around the nucleic acid. What is the structural makeup of these, uh, these complexes? And for that reason, we uh, used the synchrotron-based uh, small angle X-ray scattering. And the reason uh, that we needed a synchrotron-based uh, X-ray scattering is that the beam flux was um, should, should uh, be quite high because these lipid nanoparticles are relatively dilute systems. And um, for that reason, uh, the benchtop um, instruments uh, didn't work properly. So I see Pavel Hill in, uh, in the audience. Pavel uh, was uh, spearheading actually these uh, uh, studies of um, looking at how the lipids uh, uh, cationic lipids arranged in or, uh, in uh, complexing the uh, nucleic acids. So when we look at uh, how these um, st structures can uh, can build up, depending on the shape uh, of these uh, Gemini surfactants, we can have different uh, type of arrangements. Uh, we can have a lamellar arrangement when these uh, Gemini surfactants are uh, cylindrical. We can have a, a hexagonal uh, structure when uh, these Gemini surfactants have more of a conical arrangement with a smaller he head group and a larger uh, tail area. And we can have a, a higher order uh, organization like the cubic phase, uh, which uh, requires a variety of these lipids uh, mixed together um, in um, the same uh, nanoparticle. Our um, uh, small angle X-ray scattering data show that uh, the uh, uh, plasmid DNA and the Gemini uh, lipid complexes uh, were correlating with the transfection efficiency. So these studies are important because uh, we want to um, develop uh, these delivery systems to be used in uh, uh, cell culture experiments in and animal studies and hopefully down the road in humans. But uh, we uh, these these studies are uh, quite expensive even the, at the cellular level. So the more we can streamline our um, delivery system before we go into in vitro and in vivo studies, um, the fewer uh, formulations we have to make then uh, to um, spend, uh, to make these expensive and time consuming experiments. So this is why we wanted to develop a structure activity relationship relatively early on to see what are those key features in these Gemini surfactants that are important and we can optimize uh, down the road to um, have high uh, transfection efficiency and low toxicity. Uh, when we looked at uh, the uh, plasmid Gemini complexes, we realized, uh, as I mentioned, that the main scattering peak correlated with the transfection efficiency. 
Uh, however, uh, when we complex the uh, plasmid with the Gemini uh, lipids on their own, they had a relatively low efficiency. So we had to add the helper lipid, the DO layer phosphatidyl ethanolamine, as I showed in the first uh, slide, um, in order to increase their uh, transfection efficiency. And this also uh, led to uh, structural polymorphism where lamellar and cubic phases coexisted in the same. Um, nanoparticle. So moving on, we uh, knew that, okay, because these um, features were important, we can make these formulations, we characterize them by small angle X-ray scattering and select only those ones that had have the proper feature for um, moving into the um, in vitro and in vivo studies. When after we uh, were able to select a good formulation uh, through the in vitro studies, we looked at uh, the in vivo uh, model. And this in vivo model was uh, a model for scleroderma and the uh, tight skin uh, mouse model was um, tested. And uh, this was the very first time that uh, we could demonstrate that yes, nucleic acids can uh, be delivered through the skin and we can achieve appropriate uh, levels of the um, gene expression in order to correct a disease. And while there was a lower level of interferon gamma, this, this is the uh, therapeutic pro uh, protein expression in the uh, topically treated animals compared to the injected animals, we could still achieve uh, a, a therapeutic effect where the uh, skin of the uh, animals uh, got back to the uh, original uh, thickness com uh, comparative uh, to the animals that had no disease. While we had relatively good uh, outcome from these uh, studies, we wanted to optimize even more uh, these formulations because, um, as I mentioned, we or, uh, we still had to use um, one to 10 charge ratio of the uh, DNA to the, the lipid. So we wanted to see if we can optimize this uh, complexation in order to lower the uh, concentration of these, uh, these Gemini surfactants. And uh, as I mentioned, based on the how the, uh, these complexes are forming, we were looking at uh, what are the distances between the two cationic head groups compared to the two phosphate uh, groups on the um, nucleic acids? And we tried to uh, match as, as uh, much as possible with the spaces, these um, uh, distances in order to potentially increase uh, uh, the ability of the Gemini surfactants to complex the uh, nucleic acids and also to increase the transfection efficiency while lowering their uh, toxicity because these Gemini surfactants, while less toxic than their uh, monocationic uh, counterparts, they still present uh, some level of toxicity. So uh, by uh, optimizing the distances between the nitrogen centers, we uh, found that we can increase their transfection efficiency and reduce their uh, toxicity. Even moving further, we were thinking that uh, these uh, cationic uh, head groups are relatively um, harsh and strong cationic uh, centers. So um, we were thinking that maybe we can shield somehow this uh, cationic center by attaching amino acids uh, to the head group. Uh, there would uh, be two benefits to that. One that we dampen a little bit this uh, harsh cationic head group uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, we also could uh, have a halo of uh, uh, amino acids on these nanoparticles that are biologically um, uh, acceptable and uh, we would have expected that by this we can uh, reduce the toxicity of these um, nanoparticles. So my student uh, developed these uh, 
uh, amino acid substituted Gemini surfactants. And as you can uh, uh, see in this image, the red circles are those uh, two uh, Gemini complex uh, compounds that had significantly higher uh, efficiency compared to the um, previous generations, uh, second generation uh, Gemini surfactants. And again, we used a uh, small angle assay scattering to uh, streamline and select uh, those uh, nanoparticles that uh, had a good transfection efficiency. Also, we were looking at uh, the mechanism of uh, the cellular optic uh, in order to uh, optimize even further these uh, uh, nanoparticles. A different type of um, uh, cellular internalization are triggered by the different surface morphology of these uh, 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 nanoparticles. So we were looking at how can we optimize even with the helper lipids, what kind of helper lip lipids we, sh we should add into the composition in order to uh, increase the transfection um, uh, efficiency. So on this uh, right side, you can see, and this is for uh, for graduate students, that this is Jack Beer before he started these experiments. And then Finally, he succeeded to optimize all the uh, parameters in this experiment. And this is Jagbir after uh, his paper was published. The, uh, one of the issues that we faced in um, this, this um, project is that we were not able to monitor the fate of the Gemini uh, lipids in uh, inside the cells and uh, in the formulations because uh, these Gemini lipids uh, contain no fluorophore, no chromophore, so we weren't able to uh, monitor uh, their uh, presence in, uh, in the formulations and in the uh, inside the cells. So in collaboration with ANAS, uh, we developed uh, mass spectrometry methods in uh, to be able to uh, monitor these uh, these formulations that help down, uh, us down the road to see uh, where these lipids are in um, inside the cells, whether they remain with the nucleic acid for the uh, for a long time, are they internalized together with the nucleic acids, or the, they remain on the surface and they uh, release their content uh, inside the cells? Because this information is also very important uh, for. Uh, future design in order to see how can we protect the best these um, uh, nucleic acid drugs um, and um, release at the site, uh, site there, uh, of direction. So this is why we um, had to develop these uh, mass spectrometric uh, methods. Uh, moving on then, um, MACE developed a whole uh, series of these uh, third generation Gemini surfactants by attaching different amino acids uh, to the head group, by uh, changing the tail, the length, the uh, saturation of the tails in order to see, uh, to uh, develop a structure activity uh, relationship of these Gemini surfactants. And she found that uh, the uh, nature and the length of the tail is very important and we could reduce the uh, charge ratio of the uh, negative to uh, positive uh, cationic to uh, anionic uh, molecules in order to increase the transfection efficiency. And we found that uh, at this point, we uh, could have a 2.5 uh, ratio uh, and still have efficient uh, delivery systems. Uh, the small angle X-ray scattering data uh, showed that uh, these uh, complexes uh, formed hexagonal structure and uh, the packing parameter, which meant how well these uh, lipids can organize around the nucleic acid um, was uh, at, at that, uh, that attributed to the high efficiency of the uh, Gemini lipids. I have to look at the time here. 
And again, um, mass spectrometry will uh, was developed to identify uh, how these uh, lipids are distributed inside uh, the cells and inside the tissue. Uh, we also um, used uh, small angle X-ray scattering in order to see if we can, uh, if we add the labels on these um, uh, Gemini lipids in order to track uh, the uh, behavior of these Gemini uh, lipid-based nanoparticles inside um, the body uh, to uh, see if we can label these um, molecules without changing their properties. And uh, we uh, labeled with uh, a calator that can accommodate uh, zir uh, zirconium for uh, positron em emission tomography. So each one did these, uh, these experiments and uh, uh, by using small angle X-ray scattering again, uh, he demonstrated that uh, yes, we can label uh, these uh, molecules and will not change their assembly um, of the lipid nanoparticles. So we expected that the behavior uh, will be similar to those uh, unlabeled uh, nanoparticles. And then uh, we looked at uh, the biodistribution of uh, these uh, nanoparticles. And also we found that, uh, yes, they stay, uh, stay uh, together as a nanoparticle because their distribution was quite different for from the biodistribution of, uh, of the surfactant, which is, again, is an important uh, milestone in the development of uh, gene delivery systems uh, for um, human uh, studies. And then the most recent uh, advance in this uh, study um, in this uh, area is to develop uh, these Gemini cationic based uh, nucleic acid delivery systems for um, cell differentiation. Our, um, oh, um, also, we uh, um, first I ask if there are any questions or should I just carry on and then we have at the end. We'll have time set aside for a Q&A at the end, so you can just keep going now. OK. Uh, just uh, as a side project here, we use the same uh, Gemini cationic surfactants for uh, uh, delivery of small molecules. And again, uh, there were challenges here that uh, we um, could use uh, synchrotron-based techniques to uh, solve these challenges. So uh, we developed this. Um, uh, beta cyclodextrin Gemini uh, lipids in order to so uh, solubilize poorly soluble drugs. And uh, we use this as a model for melanoma. Uh, and these complexes uh, were much more efficient in uh, killing melanoma cells compared to the uh, drug alone. And uh, interestingly, uh, they had no effect on the healthy uh, surrounding cells in melanoma. So it, uh, it was quite a promising uh, uh, study. However, we didn't know how these um, drug molecules and the Gemini uh, molecules are assembling. So uh, X-ray crystallography and powder, di uh, powder diffraction was used in, uh, to um, look at the uh, formation of these um, uh, complexes uh, with uh, the uh, drug and the uh, Gemini beta cyclodextrin uh, molecules. And then we also uh, used um, ROSI NMR to um, further elucidate these um, uh, complex formations. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we uh, used uh, saturated and unsaturated tails and uh, we found that uh, their structural uh, organization was uh, different. Uh, when we had the uh, saturated tails, uh, they uh, folded into the cavity of the cyclodextrin together with the drug. But when we had unsaturated tails, they had less uh, propensity to fold and occupy space in the cyclodextrin cavity with the drug. So we uh, uh, structurally could, uh, could optimize these um, delivery systems. 
So the second uh, part of the, the um, okay, I have still uh, about 20 minutes, right? I hope yeah, you do. Okay. Uh, so the second uh, part of my uh, talk is based on a different type of uh, gene delivery system uh, from the lipid-based delivery system. We started using uh, nanodiamonds in uh, order to uh, find some uh, kind of core that might be even less toxic than uh, the uh, cationic uh, lipids. And the other reason uh, that we were thinking of nanodiamonds is that uh, the uh, lipid-based nanoparticles, once they are dispersed in a biological environment, they might uh, disintegrate and release their uh, drug, uh, whether that is a nucleic acid type of drug or small molecule, before they get to the target. So having a nanodiamond, a solid core, uh, delivery system, we expected that once we complex uh, the nucleic acid with these nanodiamonds, they will stay together for a longer period of time, and the biological environment has less effects on um, the um, nature of these, uh, these complexes. And we also selected nanodiamonds because these are the least toxic um, carbon materials uh, that are known for uh, drug and uh, gene delivery. However, the uh, pristine detonation nanodiamonds on their own are not amenable for uh, nucleic acid delivery because their surface is generally negatively charged. So that also uh, that doesn't help with binding the cationic uh, with the negatively charged nucleic acid. So we have to had to change the surface into a cationic uh, nature. Having lessons learned from uh, the uh, Gemini lipids, we were also thinking that let's try uh, basic amino acids on the surface of, uh, of the nanodiamonds. Uh, to change the surface of the nanodiamonds and also to um, make sure that these nanodiamonds are not um, aggregating, they remain nicely dispersed um, in um, aqueous environment. Uh, we looked at, uh, uh, this was a, a relatively steep uh, learning curve because traditional techniques of characterizing uh, newly synthesized molecules uh, such as uh, NMR and mass spec didn't work in the case of nanodiamonds because the nanodiamonds have no um, defined mass. And so we had to uh, develop new techniques to uh, characterize their uh, uh, loading. And we used um, uh, thermogravimetry and calculated um, what the uh, functionalization uh, might be on their uh, surface. Um, from uh, lessons from the Gemini surfactants, we also use lysine as the first uh, uh, um, amino, acids, uh, amino acid to add on to, onto the surface. Uh, we looked at um, cellular internalization, and um, Sanya also developed a flow cytometry method to uh, detect internalization of the nanodiamonds in, inside the cells. And uh, oh. she found that um, uh, the uh, nanodiamonds alone and complexed uh, with the um, uh, nucleic acids internalized um, quite uh, well. Uh, in the presence or in the absence of uh, serum. However, those nanodiamonds that were not functionalized, the original pristine nanodi nanodiamonds did not uh, internalize efficiently. We um, wanted to see where these uh, nanodiamonds actually um, are situating inside the cells because we want to uh, make sure that the uh, intracellular traf uh, trafficking of these nanodiamonds 
uh, leads to the release of the nucleic acids and uh, function um, of the, the nucleic acids. However, nanodiamonds are carbon material, so uh, we couldn't use any of the uh, techniques that uh, uh, would uh, be as a first option, such as rem uh, Remen uh, spectroscopy or uh, uh, transmission electron microscopy, because we would not be able to differentiate the carbon um, of the nanodiamond from the organic carbon in all the other uh, organic molecules in the cell. So we uh, did uh, transmission electron microscopy and uh, as image A shows, we saw some black uh, dots inside the, the cells, but we couldn't say that are these nanodiamonds or these are just uh, artifacts from the uh, staining or what, uh, what are those uh, and, black dots in the um, transmission electron microscopy images. Uh, using uh, a scanning transmission X-ray microscopy, however, we can, could identify the diamond signature uh, specifically, and we could confirm that, yes, uh, these um, dots that we see, these uh, black uh, high contrast dots that we see on the uh, transmission electron microscopy are actually the nanodiamonds. So uh, the nanodiamonds are actually inside the cells. They are not uh, just uh, on the surface of the cell. And we can also look at where they actually are in relationship to the nucleus or other uh, intracellular organelles. Um, however, the lysine uh, nanodiamonds, while they internalized in, in, inside the cells, they could carry the nucleic acid in, inside the cells. They didn't release properly the um, uh, nucleic acid, so we didn't see any biological effect when we used um, lysine conjugated nanodiamonds. So we were thinking that uh, this is because these uh, complexes are entrapped in inside the cellular organelles, um, endosomes. And then, so we have to look at a way to release these uh, complexes from uh, the endosomes. And we looked at uh, attaching um, other uh, basic amino acids that have a different pKa value. And uh, by this, we can help uh, disrupting these uh, uh, endosomes and release the nucleic, uh, nucleic acid. So uh, Sanya did uh, all uh, these um, functionalizations. And for uh, the chemists in the room, this was quite a, an undertaking because uh, all different protective groups have to be designed um, to um, be able to attach uh, the lysine and the lysyl histidine at the same time onto the surface of the uh, nanodiamond um, to um, have a balance between uh, binding the uh, nucleic acids and the release of the nucleic acid inside the cells. And then again, we moved into uh, uh, monitoring these nanodiamonds using uh, positron emission uh, tomography um, as, uh, as a, a tool. Uh, the last part where we are at, uh, at this point, and uh, Julia is working uh, currently on uh, these, these studies, is to uh, look at uh, as a, an application for these uh, uh, lysine and lysylistidine uh, functionalized na uh, nanodiamonds uh, to uh, deliver uh, siRNA uh, to treat uh, hepatocellular uh, carcinoma. And then again, we did electron microscopy because this is a totally new cell uh, line um, and a totally new uh, type of uh, nanoparticle. We also wanted to um, look at how these uh, uh, complexes are distributing uh, inside the cells and confirmed uh, the presence of the nanodiamonds uh, with the small uh, scanning transmission X-ray uh, microscopy uh, by identifying the diamond signature uh, compared to the other 
um, carbon uh, materials inside the cell. And then, so we have uh, some future directions in uh, the nucleic acid delivery, uh, I uh, already mentioned that we are looking at now uh, therapeutic targets and we are going to uh, use uh, synchrotron techniques to uh, optimize these uh, delivery systems and uh, to um, map their distribution inside uh, cells or organs down the road. Uh, we, uh, are, uh, we are looking at uh, terranostic approaches where uh, we look at uh, delivery of imaging and uh, therapeutic agents at the same time into the same nanoparticle uh, to uh, our targets. And we are diversifying the Gemini lipids for, um, currently we have studies for intranasal uh, peptide delivery. So we again have to go back uh, and um, use um, uh, small angle X-ray scattering to characterize uh, these complexes uh, to develop uh, these uh, delivery systems for um, uh, asthma immunotherapy. This is the research team throughout the years. And um, this uh, middle image uh, where Julia is, is uh, the latest of the addition. We like to have fun. So thank you. Oh, how did I do? Oh, very good. Thank you, Eldico. Yeah, you have you yeah. have plenty of time to spare. No worries. <laughs> Run through the <laughs> information. Well, if there was anything you wanted to go back and, and expand on, now is a good time to do it. Um, otherwise, if anyone has any questions, if you can either drop something into the chat or um, use the raise hand icon in Zoom and I will call on you. And no need to be shy. And if you have any questions about uh, the small angle X-ray scattering, Pavel will answer those questions. And the six M, I don't know, I don't see uh, who is in, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Jan is, is Jan here? Jan's here, yeah, I see him. Okay, so Jan, you are up if uh, there are questions about six M. Uh, pardon me? <laughs> I said that you are going to have to answer the questions about yes. sticks. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are running beamline now. Yeah. So, so listening to your talk. Nice talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't see any questions. So Ildiko, I think you explained everything perfectly. Thank you so much for, for joining us as a speaker today. That was really cool to see what you what all you've been up to. Um oh Levi, I see your hand up. Yes. Hi there. Um, I just was curious about the kind of cost differential between using those nano diamonds and those Gemini lipids. Like if one is, you're talking a lot about efficiency between the two, but is it realistic to use one versus the other? Um, like, uh, probably not for the same, uh, same purpose. I, I think uh, each type of nanoparticle should be developed uh, with the target disease in mind. Uh, and uh, so, for example, uh, the uh, nano diamond type of delivery systems, we will not envision to, to develop, for example, uh, for delivery into the brain because we don't know if they are eliminating from the brain. Um, they might stay in the, in this uh, area for a longer period of time. So uh, maybe in that context, lipid based delivery systems would be more amenable. However, for example, delivery into the liver, then we would go and develop more of the nano diamond uh, type of delivery systems because we know that they uh, complex better and they stay together as a nanoparticle better. So um, in a kind of uh, uh, indirect way, I responded to this question that uh, we are ne rarely doing head to head comparison. However, um, Nano diamonds are quite cheap. They are using nano diamonds to coat uh, uh, cars for uh, uh, um, 
being corrosion resistant and this and that. So nano diamonds are not uh, expensive. And functionalization price wise is pretty similar to synthesizing Gemini surfactant. So I don't think that is um, difference uh, that much. However, uh, the uh, Gemini surfactants complex the nucleic acids at the uh, smaller, uh, lower charge ratio than the nano diamonds. So we might have to use a little bit more of the nano diamonds to have the same, the similar efficiency. Thank you. But yes, that is usually what uh, how we approach. Uh, the uh, design of delivery systems, we have a disease in mind and uh, work back from the disease to look at uh, whether there is an appropriate animal model. And um, by appropriate, I mean that is uh, somewhat acceptable animal model because there is no perfect animal model. And then from there, we uh, go back again one step and look at what a, a cellular model we can use to streamline these um, delivery systems. And then we start synthesizing and start uh, um, establishing structure activity relationship. And so usually we uh, think ahead of, okay, what kind of properties we want in this uh, delivery system. Man, that's so cool. So yeah. last chance to ask any questions. Uh, the uh, funny, uh, funny thing, Maze here, uh, she was uh, uh, the shortest one in the group and she was always uh, uh, designated to take the selfies <laughs> with the shortest arm. Well, we she she's not like a good job anyone else. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Ildiko, for the, for your talk. Um, we will have another seminar on November 22nd. This will be with David Cooper, and that'll again be at 1.30. So tune back in. We'll we'll send out email reminder emails about that. So tune, tune in for that. And otherwise, see all of you at the CLS AUM this weekend next week. It's particularly if you're doing any workshops in the next few days. Have fun. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Ildiko. Bye.